Okay, welcome again to this uh, video lecture on basic surveying. Now, today we will start a new module, it is module number 3 and the name of the module is linear measurements. What we will start today with is lecture number 1. What we have seen so far in the basic concepts of surveying, whatever we did in the last module. All those things were very, very important about the surveying because we discussed that why we need the surveying, what are the basic principles of surveying, working from whole to part, maintaining check, redundancy in observations, okay, adjustment of the observations. So, all those things are very important points. Then we came to the other aspect, you know, like the classification of surveys. What are the different kinds of surveys? If we consider the curvature of the earth and we measure the distances along the curvature and also we consider the curvature. In that case, if at all we are forming a triangle on the surface of the earth, it will not be a plane triangle, it will be a spherical triangle. So, that kind of survey where the curvature is considered, we do that survey in very large areas and that kind of survey is called geodetic survey. Then, for our engineering applications, we saw it, our engineering projects are little, you know, the area is not very big, not very wide. So, if our area of concern is generally smaller and if it is so, we go for a survey which is called plane surveying and in the case of the plane surveying, we consider our earth to be flat. Though we are measuring the distances, so we measure the distances along a horizontal line, even if we are spreading the tape on the surface of the earth and we are measuring the distances along that, we consider that little part of the earth to be flat. So, we project our earth which is curvature for a small area on a horizontal plane and we saw it for x and y mapping, it is all right because the error was very, very less, minuscule. However, for z, the elevation point of view. In case of the elevation, we cannot consider earth to be flat. We saw it that just in 10 kilometers, there was a difference of 8 meter. If you are measuring the elevations or heights of the points on the surface of the earth from flat surface and then from the joid. Now, talking about the joid, the joid was an equipotential surface. Mostly, as we will see later on also, we use mean sea level as our joint and then with reference to that joint which works as the datum, as the reference, we measure the elevations of all the points which are on the surface of the earth. So, by projecting those points along the direction of the gravity on joint, we know now the elevations. And mind it, we discuss it in detail, the elevation surveying or engineering means, if point A is higher than point B, water from A should flow to point B. So, always we should keep this thing in mind. Then we are talking about the measurements, so now automatically we have to talk about the errors. So, in errors we talked about the sources, then the types of the errors, where from the errors come, what are the sources, what could be the type, you know, it could be the blunder, it could be the systematic error, which follows a law, where we can write the mathematical model and eliminate it, or random error. Then we saw the treatment of these, particularly for the random error, because the random errors they follow the normal distribution curve and that tells us lot about the observations. We saw also how to eliminate the outliers. We saw also why we say some measurements to be the weighted observations or weighted measurements, how we give them weight. So, this was all what we have already discussed. So, if you are beginning with this linear measurements module, we should know about that background also. Here in the linear measurements today, we will start with the meaning of distance in surveying. What is the meaning of distance here or the length measurement? Then, we will talk about some instruments which are conventional like the chain and tapes, what are their types? We will see the operation of taping and chaining. How do we measure a length? They are in the field using tape of chain. Along with, there will be discussions on ranging direct and indirect method, because we can 
we'll discuss this what the ranging is how we can you do why we can do it by a direct method and an indirect method then again here there will be errors in the measurement of distance so we need to apply some corrections so we'll be talking about this particular part well we'll start with distance measurement or we can say linear measurement first of all what is the meaning of distance in surveying what do we mean by for example let us say if we have two points this is the surface of the earth and we have a point here and another point here point is a another point is b well what we can do we can measure a distance between these two edge this what this distance is this is actually the sloping distance or slope distance in surveying we never measure this distance we measure it but whenever we mean by distance we mean not the sloping distance we convert this sloping distance again in something which we need and what we need we need always the horizontal distance or maybe the distance along the curvature depends upon what kind of survey we are doing the plane surveying or the geodetic surveying in case of geodetic we mean distance along the curvature in case of the plane surveying the distance means distance on a horizontal plane so this is the distance so whenever we will be talking about measuring any distance we mean we are measuring this horizontal distance because we are mostly talking about the plane surveying a surveying which will be useful for engineering applications well if this is so what are the methods and in these methods we will start with something which is very very conventional okay of course there could be the methods like pacing you walk along count how many paces convert it to the distance there are some other devices for example a little wheel and you know the diameter of the little wheel and a person is walking there on the ground with the little wheel and you measure how many rotations this wheel has made and you can measure the distance between two points well we'll talk about another one which is very often used and we say that as chain now during this course we'll talk about some methods which are kind of conventional method kind of you know that on the words of being obsolete they are not still many people are using them but there are also some modern instruments which can do the same job very fast why is the requirement of talking about those instrument then because it's still in the field you'll find some people are making use of these equipments these instruments to measure any observation to take any observation so this is why we need to talk about and also another thing in order to understand the basic meaning of observations to understand the basic fundamentals we would not like to jump straight to the very very sophisticated instrument rather we will start with some very basic instrument and this is why there is a need to talk about these yes we will go about these slightly faster and i will expect you go to any textbook and read about these things in the textbook also well what the chain is a chain as i will show you here i kept a chain here and for this chain it has two ends in a moment when we go to the field we'll use this chain for measuring the distances and this is a very very conventional instrument for measuring the distances now in the case of the chain we have at two ends two handles and these two handles when i spread the chain will be as in this case 30 meter apart 
well the characteristic of the chain age is link here for example what is the meaning of a single link a single link means it starts from the center of the circle here to the center of the circle here and this distance is 20 centimeter why it is kept 20 centimeter because it is comfortable to handle the chain this way now you can guess how many such links are there in this chain also for two links the link here and this link here they are jointed by three rings if i draw it here in the diagram these three links mean we have a solid ring here then one ring center ring one more ring then another solid ring so we got these three rings joining to links while the distance 20 centimeter is from the center of center ring now why these three one two three they are three in order to ensure proper flexibility so that we can keep it in any way to ensure the proper flexibility the material mostly is a mild steel and this is a very common instrument for measuring the distances and this chain in this case it is 30 meter it comes in different lengths also now where the length is written mostly you will find the length of the chain is written there in the handle or maybe in the center there is a little tally and that tally indicates by a little circle and you will find 30 meter is written there also I gave you one word tally what the tallies are along your chain once you are measuring from one point to the other point the distance is 30 meter while you are walking along this you need not to count how many links you have walked through because if you want if you are somewhere here for example you want to know what this length is to know this length to know this length you have to either count all the rings or all the links let's say n into links but that is very time consuming so in order to facilitate an fast work there are some tallies. Tallies at every one meter, there is a brass ring, and at every three meter for this chain, there will be a particular feature which we will see. This is for three meter, this is for six meter, nine meter, and so on. So, for the middle of the chain, we have a ring like this which is at 15 meter from both the ends. So, these brass items are called the tallies. So, they help you in order to determine the length of the chain. Now, along with the chain, what we will do now, we will go to the ground and we will measure a distance using the chain. While we are measuring the distance using the chain, we will make use of some other things for example a plumb bob we know all of us have seen this is the plumb bob and in case of the plumb bob there is a twine a thread and from this a heavy bob is suspended we will see why we need it I will just give you one little example here where it may be required let us say you have to measure the distance between two points A and B and the area is sloping because the area is sloping I cannot keep my chain along the line like this the ground is undulating so what I do I put one end of the chain here and I stretch it to ens by ensuring that the sag is not much if the sag is there we can apply correction for that and then from this point on, I will drop my plumb bob. So, this plumb bob will give me the end 
of the chain there in the ground it will project it. So, from this point on again we will measure the another segment. So, the segment L1, L2 then again we will drop the plumb bob and now again we will have the chain again the plumb bob and this is how L3 and the final one. So, our total length L will be sigma L i. So, we make use of plumb bob in order to project this point down there. So, that is one instrument which is useful. Then another instrument or another very simple thing which is kept here is called ranging rod. I will write its name here. This is called ranging rod. As you see, this ranging rod will make use of this in measuring the distances, in doing a term called ranging. So, once we go to the ground, we will do the ranging. What is the meaning of that? If you are here at point A and point B, you want to measure the distance between point A and B, which is let us say is around 100 meter. The chain that you have is only 30 meter. Then what you need to do? You need to put multiple lengths of the chain over here. Not only one will do. So, 30, 30, 30 and rest. Well, while we are doing it, we must ensure that we are putting this chain along the straight line. Starting from A to B, all these points, intermediate points should be in the line A and B. How do we do that? We start with one ranging rod here, another ranging rod here and a person standing here directs a third person who is walking with the ranging rod. So, this person here is walking transverse to this direction with the ranging rod. And the moment this person finds that this ranging rod is in line of A and B, he directs him to stop. So, this is how you locate this point. So, this method we say the direct ranging method. I will tell you one more that there is called indirect ranging. when we use it, just one example, there may be many, many more cases. One, one example could be, let us say in between A and B, A and B, the ground is slightly undulating like this and the length of the ranging rod, this height, this height of the ranging rod is less than this total elevation. Well, we have one ranging rod here, another ranging rod here. Now, a third person is walking here with the ranging rod. We cannot see from A the ranging rod B. We cannot see it because of this hump. So, what, what to do in this case? We go for a thing called indirect ranging. Now, the next diagram that I am drawing, this was the profile, this was the cross section of the area. I am going to draw now the top view or the plan view of the area. Well, in the plan view, my point A, then point B. Well, somewhere where the hump is, you are standing in the side of the hump. Let us say the hump is just like this. I am just trying to draw contour kind of figure and this shows Yes, there is a hump, the area is higher here. What we do here, we start with a point, let us say which is outside. Okay? So, the third person who is carrying this ranging rod with him, he is carrying this ranging rod with him, he is outside this hump. The only thing is, he can see from this point B as well as A. Well, now what we can do, we can 
mark this line. Okay. Now, from this point on, we can also see B. Yes. So, now from this point, you are able to see A and B one more ranging rod. I am showing it by a different color. We put here, so that from this point, I can see this ranging rod and this. So, this ranging rod is put in the line shown here. Next, this ranging rod, the person with this ranging rod, he moves inward, so that from this point here, we can put the ranging rod in this line. So, the next ranging rod is kept here. Again, from this point, this ranging rod starts moving inward, so that from here, we can see our ranging rod, if it is D and C. So, the C ranging rod can see the D as well as B. Again, from this point on, we ask, the D will ask ranging rod C to move inward till he finds that from D, he can see C and A in a line. So, we keep doing it and ultimately, you end up being in the line. So, you will have two points C and D, C and D which will be on line A B and these two points will be on the top of the hump. Then, by making use of these two points, because I can see from C A, I can see from D B, I can also establish some intermediate points. So, this is the method of the indirect ranging. So, what we will do, we will go to the ground and now, and we will see how we can measure the distance using the chain. Okay, the very first step in the field is to open the chain and how to open the chain, I will show you that thing. We hold the chain like this in our hand and this way and we throw the chain. So, that way we can open the chain. This is how we open the chain. So, we want to measure the distance between a point here, the other point is there. Now, in this process there will be a leader as he is the leader having the ranging rod arrows and the chain, while I am the follower and I will follow him. I am holding one end of the chain here, while the leader is moving to the other point. The leader will move up to around a one chain length. Now I am directing the leader to be along the line, that is by ranging. So, I am asking him to move along the line and he keeps moving and keeps moving and keeps moving till he is in that line. Now, the leader will swing the chain along the line so that the chain is along these two points. So, at the end of the chain, now the leader puts the arrow. So, this distance is one chain length. Now, the leader moves with the chain and rest of the arrows and the ranging rod. He moves further to the other point. Well, the follower now collects all the arrows which are put there in the ground one by one. In this case, the length of the distance is only less than 70 meter. So, only one arrow is collected. Now, the next job will be finding the length from this point where I am standing to the point there. In the meantime, the follower is also coming with the other hand of the chain. So, he puts the other hand of the chain there in the ground where the arrow is. And he also collects all the arrows which were put by the leader so that we can count how many chains were there. Well, the next job is to read the chain from this point to the end of the line. What is the reading? So, at the other end of the distance, this point, now we need to read what is the value in the chain. So, now what we will see, we will see how to read along the chain. Okay, to measure the distance along the chain, what we do, as we discussed, we make use of the tallies. 
like at one meter from this end is one little ring and if you move further at three meters we have the first leaf then at six meter we have got two so three twice six similarly this for nine this for twelve finally this is for fifteen so we make use of this for measuring the length at the end of the day we have to fold the chain so we put the chain in such a way so that the 15 meter mark is here and the chain is spread in two now to fold the chain we fold them link by link till we meet both the handles so we saw there in the ground how to measure distance using chain and we learned a lot about the chain the another instrument for measuring distance is tape and this is the one which is still used very often you'll find people having the tape and measuring the distances what the tape is tapes are generally made of you must have seen some cloth but we don't use these in surveying because surveying involves working in the field where there is water there are many other things which will damage this we had also metallic metallic tapes where we had some little fibers of metal running and they were coated by some plastic this is also not being used now much the new tape which is mostly in use now is glass fiber glass fiber now in this tape the construction is like this if I am drawing this section this is the plastic, co plastic coating and within this plastic coating we have some wires or some fibers of glass running so this is a very good tape because in this case we have a plastic coating where the graduations are written I will show you one example of this. The example of this tape is here. This is the tape by Freemans and that is the tape. Now in the case of the tape, we have the graduations written on both the sides and in this case the least count is 1 centimeter. There are many many cases where you will find the tapes having the least count of 1 millimeter also. One thing very important we should keep in mind whenever we are measuring the distances either with chain or tape the end of the tape or chain is the point here. Similarly in the case of the chain also please ensure that we should measure from here because the last link is smaller and it is obvious. We have another tape which is also used very often and for accurate measurements that tape is called steel, steel tape. What it is? As you can see here, this tape is made of steel and here also the graduations are in this case in millimeter and we start measuring again from the end of it just this end so they are used you know specific uses where should we use the steel tape where should we use the fiberglass tape so there are specific uses of these and depending upon the field depending upon the, your requirements if I am looking for accurate measurements I will go for a steel tape if I am going to plot the details taking the offsets I will go for a fiberglass tape. Now what we will see, we will see next the operation of taping. The meaning is how we can measure accurately 
using a tape. What are the steps involved? Because while we are talking about this, there will be many things which will come in picture. And those things we should know. Now, in case of taping, let me also tell you that these tapes, they come in various lengths. 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter, 50 and even 100 meter also. Now, it's your judgment which tape you are going to use for your work. Well, we are taking let us say any of these tapes for our purpose and we want to measure the distance between two points A and B using a tape which has let us say any length here 30 meter. So, what are the steps involved? Some of the things which we should take care. Number one, of course, we will have the ranging rods at A and B. Number two, we will need to do the ranging as in the case of chaining. We did measure a distance with the chain. Similarly, here also we will need to establish intermediate points along the line AB. So, this establishing intermediate points along this line AB is the ranging. So, we will need to do the ranging. Then third, what we do? We spread our tape. For example, our points A is here and the B is here. Now, this is very interesting, this is very important. How do we spread the points? We make use of measuring plate and also a spring balance. Now, why we are making use of these? Number one, we will talk about the measuring plate. What we do? Where our point is? A. I keep, if I am drawing this in plan now, we will have a measuring plate like this. Okay? As I can show you here, a measuring plate may look like this. Okay? This is not the actual measuring plate, but it may look like this, where we have lines running here. We have some references made. What we do? We spread our tape above this measuring plate. Now, if this is my tape and it runs till the next measuring plate and there are also the lines. See, what we are doing? In this length A, B, we are trying to measure a part of it, let us say the bay number 1. We are trying to measure the ac accurately the distance between these two. And this distance is of course less than 30 meter, because our tape is 30 meter. So, at the two ends, here at A and here at B, we have our measuring plates. This measuring plate is resting on point A, while this one is somewhere in between. Using the spring balance, the use of the spring balance now, using the spring balance, we apply a pull. Because you know, when this tape is made, when this steel tape or any tape is made, the length of the tape, if we say is 30 meter, it is at a certain specified pull. That pull may be 50 Newton. So, it is given at that pull, 50 Newton pull. So, what we do, we apply the corresponding force here, the corresponding pull here, so that our tape is stressed to its standard pull. So, there is no error because of the less pull or more pull. Well, at that time, when the pull is exactly the standard pull, we measure these two points. Someone reads here and someone reads here carefully. So, we record the length 
L1 in the first bay. Similarly, we also record at that time when we are measuring this the temperature T1. So, in a long bay for each point we measure the length and temperature while the pull applied was a standard pull. If at all point A and point B have different elevations for example, this way we also measure the difference in elevation delta H A B. But why? Ultimately by measuring this length L1 we apply correction to this length using the temperature which is there in the field because when this tape was made it was made at a certain standard temperature. For example, 20 degree Celsius that is the temperature at which most of the tapes are made. Their standard length is at this temperature. So, the temperature there in the field will be different. So, if it is different we need to apply correction that is why we are measuring for each bay while we are measuring the length we are also measuring the temperature. If the pull applied is not 50 Newton the standard pull we also measure the corresponding pull because we can apply the correction also for the pull. So, what and then when we are measuring the difference in elevation between these two we are converting the sloping distance then in horizontal distance if you know this difference in elevation. So, what we have ensured we have ensured that we are applying all kinds of corrections and then we are finding the horizontal distance between these two points. So, we have to be very careful when we are measuring the distances or when we want to measure the distances accurately with tape and because the tapes are generally used to measure the distances accurately. So, we have to be very very careful about all these steps. Another method which is called measurement in catenary. Now, in earlier case what we are doing if my ground had some undulations I was keeping my tape here. So, tape will also have some undulation it will follow some undulations. I want to avoid it I do not want to keep it along the ground I do not want to keep it over the ground. So, that my measurements are very accurate what is done in this case in between two points we have some arrangements like tripods and let me make these tripods at two different elevations. That is the one and here is the other one. In between we suspend our tape let us say the tape is suspended here. So, naturally when the tape is being suspended tape will be in a catenary it cannot be straight here because the gravity is working. Then we apply using our spring balance a particular force P. We also measure the temperature when we are taking the observations. We also measure the difference between A and B delta H a and B we also measure this difference. Now, our tape is suspended in the air by taking the observations for pull difference in elevations the temperature and also we will apply the correction to this length because the actual length sloping length is here this is the sloping length while my tape is along a sagging line. So, we need to apply correction for this also. So, we can apply correction for this which we say sag. So, we can apply correction for sag also. So, by applying all these corrections the distance between these points A and B can be determined very very accurately. Actually mostly earlier when the electronic instruments were not there in order to measure any length very precisely very very accurately 
this particular method was used. They, this is just a single bay. So, there could be multiple number of bays like this and that will give very accurate distance between two points. Well, what kind of accuracy we can achieve by our measurements using the tape? The tape is the one which is mostly used. If we are applying correction only to the slope, we can get an accuracy of 1 in 1, 5000 to 1 in 10,000. If you are applying all corrections, then the kind of the accuracy which is given by taping is 1 is to 30,000 to 1 is to 50,000. Now, let me also tell you because this is also a way of reporting the measure measurements or the accuracy. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of 1 in 5000 is if you are measuring a distance of 5000 units, let us say meter, there will be a possible error of 1 meter. The error in the measurement is of order of 1 meter. So, this is a very, you know, a, a method in order to report the accuracy of the observations. Well, the second thing, because the taping has to all in all our steel tape, we have to apply correction for temperature. Because the temperature in field or in actual, if I write A, is not same as temperature at which the tape was made standard. Is there a tape for which? Now, why, why it is happening? Why the tape is expanding? Tape is expanding because of the thermal expansion coefficient of the material. So, can we have a tape for which the coefficient of thermal expansion is very less? Well, that material is invar. So, invar is a combination an alloy of 35 percent nickel and 65 percent steel. Now, this particular material in war has got very less coefficient of thermal expansion. So, whenever we need very accurate measurements, we can go for in war. The only problem with the in war tape is they are brittle. They are not as good as to work with as our glass fiber or steel tape. Well, in all our taping operations or maybe the chaining also, we saw and we have been talking about this that we need to apply corrections. Corrections for the temperature there in the field, temperature actual is not same as temperature of the standard. The pull, pull applied to the tape is not actual one, is not same as the pull, which was a standard pull. Okay. Similarly, many more things. For example, we need to apply the corrections for the sloping distance. We are measuring between these two points A and B and these two points are at different elevations. So, we need to apply correction again for the sloping distance. So, what we will see? We will see what all these corrections are and how we can apply them one by one. Okay, so, in the corrections, we will start with the correction number 1, which we say correction for standard length. Now, one thing we should know here, our corrections may be positive or negative, depending what kind of error is occurring there. Now, in this first correction, which is for the standard length or standardization, what is happening there? This tape, the standard length of this tape as written here is 30 meter. Okay? So, this is we say the designated length. the designated length, something which is written there, but is this really 30 meter? What is the actual length? Are they same or not? Because this is 30 meter 
at certain temperature or maybe something may go wrong. Let us say I was working with this tape and something goes wrong with this tape and someone has cut it and then taken a little part of it out and then again pasted it. So what has gone, happened now? A little piece of the tape has gone away. Or maybe if you are talking about the chain, let us say one little link of the chain is missing. So if one link of the chain is missing, we are saying the chain is 30 meter, but actually if you measure it about some standard, if it is a standard length, we know exactly this is 30 meter because we have established it and these are they are in the ground. We have fixed two points using some very accurate measurements which are 30 meter away. Now what we will do, we will take our chain or our tape, we will put it on that standard and if you find that our designated length is not same as the actual length, we need to apply correction. So that correction is called correction for standard length. Now how do we apply that correction? There are two terms, one is tape or chain too long, the other one is tape or chain too short. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is I will explain only one and the second will be automatically clear to you. Well, if in our standard of 30 meter, you are spreading your tape. So this tape, the designated length of the tape is 30 meter. But somehow, maybe also, you know, by continuous use of the chain or tape, it has now expanded. So though we are saying the designated length is 30 meter, but the actual length is more than that. We say it to be too long. If it is so, what kind of correction will be there? What will be the size of correction or the sign of correction? Of course, the size of the correction, the amount of the correction will be this difference. So, in each measure of our tape, we need to apply this correction. Which direction? We should apply as in this case, what we are doing? We are measuring a length of 30 meter less than that. Because in the, here in this case, we are measuring it less. So, if you are measuring it less, our correction has to be positive. So, this particular value will be added to the measurement. I think this is clear to you and if it is, you can also find what will be the correction if the tape is too short. The too short means now my tape is like this. The 30 meter tape is only this much, two, three links are missing. The correction in this case will be negative. Okay. Now, the next correction that we will talk about is correction due to temperature. Well, as we said, the temperature of standard, the standard temperature is not same as temperature there in the field, actual temperature. Now, there may be one case, T s is more than T a or T s is less than T a. If T s is more than T a, the actual temperature there in the field is less than the standard temperature. What will happen? Our chain or tape is shrunk, its length is shorter. So, this is the case like too short and you know what kind of sign of the correction will be there. If the tape is too short. Similarly, you can also find here, in this case it will be too long. Now, what is the amount of the correction? The correction is written as C T. This is given as K times delta T into L, where L is the length measured in meter, K is the coefficient of thermal expansion and delta T is the difference in T s minus T a. So, using this we can find the correction to our tape. Well, 
the next correction is which is very important for us due to pull. We know in order to measure the distance, we have to stretch our chain or tape and we have to apply certain pull. The pull at which the chain or tape was made is the standard pull PS. It may not be same as the actual pull. So, if you are using a spring balance, then the field, you can also measure the actual pull. So, what we need to do, we need to apply correction for this difference in pull, which is P S minus P A. Now, again in this case, if P S is more than P A, there will be another case, when P S is less than P A, the actual pull is less than the standard pull. So, the meaning is chain or tape is slightly shrunk. If it is so, if it has slightly shrunk, it is too short. And if it is too short, the correction will be negative. Similarly, you can find for this case, it is too long, correction will be positive. Now, what is the value of the correction? The value of the correction, we write as C correction due to pull P is equal to L, the measured length multiplied by delta P divided by A into E. Now, where L is the measured length, delta P we know the difference in pulls. A is the cross section area of the chain or tape, because we will need this and E as you can guess is the Young's modulus of elasticity. So, by applying this, we can find the correction due to pull. Well, the next correction, if you are stretching your chain or tape between these two points. So, we are interested in measuring the distance between these two points A and B. What we do? We stretch our tape or chain in between these two points. Well, let us say I stretch it here. I am trying to measure more accurately and I am not stretching my chain or tape there on the ground. If I stretch it, let us say the red color shows the chain or tape spread on the ground and the ground has got some undulation, maybe they are very little, very very little undulations, but the length measured now will be wrong because my tape is also following those undulations. Unless I am sure about the ground that it is perfectly horizontal, for accurate measurements we should not do this. So, what we do? We suspend our tape or chain in between these two points. And if you are suspending it, because the gravity is working, we can never get the tape in the horizontal line, in the horizontal plane. It will always have some sag, because of the gravity. Whatever pull you apply, it will have the sag. So, what is the, the meaning of the sag is now, the distance between these two points is actually let us say L 1, while the tape is measuring along this sag and the length of the tape is L 2. So, what we see? There is a difference in L 2 minus L 1 and this is the correction due to sag. So, we need to know about this correction. To know about this correction, the value is, as I am writing here, the value is W square L cube, I will delete this, L cube 24 times T square. Now, what these terms are? Instead of T here, I would like to write P, because we are using the term P. Now, here these terms, we will start with number 1. 
W is unit weight of tape per meter or the weight of the tape per meter per unit length. Okay? So, weight of the tape per unit length is W. L is the length, total length which is measured in meter. P is the pull which is being applied. P. So, we can measure this P because of spring balance. We have measured a distance. Uh, here in this case it was L2. So, that is L. And we know about the tape. What is its weight per unit length? So, by doing that, correction to sec can be found. Now, what will be the sign for this correction? I am leaving it to you. Use your brain and try to find what will be the sign. Will it be positive or negative? Well, I am going to give you one more term now and that is called normal pull. What is the meaning of normal pull? There in sag, the tape is in sag. We know the tape is in sag. We are applying a pull here. So, what is happening? Let us say this distance is actually 29.3 meter. Let us say the distance between these two points A and B is 29.3 horizontal distance, but because of the sag, we have a total of 30 meter tape stressed. So, the tape is measuring this distance to be 30 meter because the sag is working while the actual distance is 29.3. This is at a certain pull P, which is the standard pull. A standard pull, so there is no error in the pull in this 30 meter. What I do now, I increase this pull slightly. If I am increasing this pull, my chain or tape will expand now. So, it will expand. And I apply this pull to an extent so that the graduation in this tape or chain, which is 29.3 meter, reaches here. What is the meaning of that? Well, even if the tape is in sag, I have applied a pull so that it reads 29.3 only. So, this is the case when the pull applied, the pull applied is or rather the other way around we can say the correction due to pull is same as correction due to sag. They are cancelling each other. So, if they are cancelling each other, that kind of pull, we say the normal pull. Okay? Now, we will look at one more correction and that we say correction for difference in elevation. This is very simple and just by using your simple geometry, you can find it. If there are two points at A and B, that is my surface of the earth, here and here. What I am measuring, I am measuring this length L. If you know this angle theta, let us say you are measuring this angle theta also, you can easily find what will be the correction, that is the difference between L minus L cos of theta, that is the amount of the correction. Or if you can measure this difference in elevation between these two points, h. So, again you can find this horizontal distance d using the Pythagoras theorem here. So, you can apply corrections if you know the difference in elevation h or the angle here. So, correction can be applied. So, we have seen today the distance measurement using tape and chain and various corrections we need to apply for it. So, we will finish our video lecture today. 